Hi guys, it's been a while. Welcome to today's video tutorial. In today's lesson, we will learn how to download useful climatic data and use it in our GIS projects. You can subscribe to this channel to follow all my previous useful GIS tips and tutorials. For those who are interested in taking up a complete course from basic to advanced GIS, you can register at WiseGS who are our sponsors for this video. I'll provide all useful links in the description below. So let's get started. So we want to learn how to get climatic data and use it in our GIS projects. So this kind of data that we can get from this link or from this source is historical data, bioclimatic variables, future climate data, and so many other kinds of data. So these data can be used for mapping and spatial modeling. The data are provided for use in research and related activities and some specialized skills and knowledge is needed to use them. I'll provide all useful links in the description below. So let's go into getting this data first. So I'm going to open my browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. You can actually use any kind of browser. So in my search button under Google, I'm going to search for World Climb. I'm going to search for World Climb, and then I'm going to hit Enter. And it's going to open up a new browser. And in this new browser, I'm going to have, it's going to open up a new link, and this link is wildclimb.org so i'm going to click on this link and it's going to take us to a new tab and you can see that this is a wild climb you can look at maps graphs tables data uh, of uh, global climate so i'm going to click on download then it will bring us to a new tab here that has the wild climb so there's uh, some information here you can read through and just understand what kind of data you can get from this on the right hand side here we have the historical data the monthly historical monthly weather data then there is a the feature climatic data so depending on your preference you can decide to choose any kind of data that you want to use for in this case for the first example i'm going to use a historical climate data i'm going to click on the historical climate data and it will open up a new tab again and in this new tab you're going to read information about these uh, historical data and you can see the variables are down here we have several variables there's a minimum temperature maximum temperature average temperature uh, precipitation and, and take note of the kind of uh, uh, units that these are uh, these variables use for temperatures degrees and for precipitation is millimeters solar radiation is in kilojoules and the wind speed is in meters per second and then there's water vapor and also we have the bioclimatic variables down here so they are further categorized into 10 minutes 5 minutes 2.5 minutes and 30 seconds so it depends on the kind of resolution you need so for our first example i'm going to use precipitation and in this case i'm going to download just the first one which is precipitation of the 10 minutes i'm going to click on that and it will open up a download command so i'm going to save it somewhere on my computer i'm going to create a new folder in my new folder i'm going to create a new folder here because i want to download all the data in my in my in my folder called climatic data always remember to organize your folders then i'm going to create a new folder here called precipitation Um, since this is precipitation data, I'm going to save it there. I'm going to click on save. And depending on your internet connection, you will get a prompt that your download is finished. So I'm going to access my download, open folder. Then we have our download. It's in form of a zip file. So I'm going to unzip it so that I can see the kind of file that it has. I'm going to extract them using WinRAR. You can use any, any other kind of uh, extractor to extract your data. I need to extract that into that folder and now i have a new folder here for my data i'm going to open the folder and you can actually see i have around one to twelve tiles uh raster tiles within my work area so i'm going to load this data into qgis so that you can actually look at it and understand what kind of information or what kind of analysis you can do to this data so i'm going to close this then i'm going to open qgis then I'm going to create a new project so i already have created a blank project here i'm going to go to layer then add layer because i already have them on my computer then 
there are raster layers. So I'm going to go to layer, uh, add layer, and add raster layer. Then I'm going to browse for where the raster layers are. And they're under my climate uh, data folder, precipitation is folder here. Then I'm going to select all of them by holding shift. And then I'm going to click on open, then click on add. And all my data now will be loaded in the background here. I'm going to click on close. And I have all the data that I want to use in my project here. So remember, the data is in millimeters. So I'm going to select the first file. And you can see the highest value is 806 millimeters. And the lowest value is 0. So I don't really actually need all these other files. For my case now, they are all different kinds of files. You can see for different uh, times and see there's some little bit of difference when I uncheck some of them. You cannot actually visually see them very nicely, but I'm going to do some little bit of customization into the data so that you can be able to see it clearly. So I'm going to select all, all of these ones. I'm going to remove them. Then I'm going to remain with this one. And I'm going to do some styling here so that at least uh, we're able to look at the data a bit better. So I'm going to go to right click on my layer, go to properties. Then I'm going to change the rendering type under symbology to single band pseudo color. Then I'm going to select this color ramp here that shows from light blue to dark blue. The darker blue meaning it's a lot of precipitation and uh, the lighter one meaning low precipitation. So I'm going to click on apply. Okay. And now you can see according to this data, there's a lot of precipitation around these uh, Eastern African and uh, Central Africa and parts of Congo, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi. And uh, it has some strange rainfall in these areas of the Sahara Desert in Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Sudan, and so on. And uh, on the, also on the southern side of Africa, we have uh, very limited or strained rainfall, especially this area of the Kalahari Desert. And then in Madagascar, we have some little bit of precipitation. Then parts of uh, Middle East have strained precipitation, including some parts of India and so on and so forth. And parts of Asia, some of parts of Asia, very nice rainfall, including some parts in South America, in Brazil, a very at least adequate precipitation. So for you to analyze now data for your area of interest, you can add another shape file, like for example, a country boundary. For in this case, I'm going to just add uh, the world boundary. So I'm going to go to the coordinate section down here, select everything, then delete and type the word world, then hit enter. And now the world shape file overlays the other layers. So what I can do is I can just change the style of this by going to the properties, making sure that I choose uh, an outline, so I'm going to choose an outline, red outline, I'm not going to do a lot of symbology here. So then if, for example, you're working around Congo, you can actually just select Congo and clip the data using the vector layer and just remain with the data of your area of interest and do your analysis by combining other kinds of data together with this. So let's go back and uh, look and see if we can also download some other kinds of data from our browser. I'm going to go to my browser and you can see you can download the maximum temperature, minimum temperature, and so on and so forth. You can actually go through this, download all the kinds of layers and compare and see which one has, has a better resolution than the other and use it in your project. So we, ca we, ca we can also download the monthly weather data. So I'm going to select the monthly weather data here. And a new page appears. So we can just go down, read, read information about this, and then you can select the kind of year you want between 1960 to 1969, 1970 to 1979, 80 to 89. So it goes up to 2018. So if I want a very old, some very old data, I can go maybe, for example, for precipitation. I click on this, and it's fairly larger than the initial data that we downloaded. So if you have very nice internet connection, it just you can have a local copy on your computer. I can browse for this one, then still save it in the precipitation folder. But now you see it is for 1960 1969. I'm going to click on save, then click on run, 
and you can see it is going to take some a pretty longer period to download so i'm going to let it download and then i'm going to use it later on in my, any other analysis so i'm going to just minimize this then we can also look at so you, you can actually explore these possibilities you can go to the minimum temperature maximum temperature precipitation so on then we can go to future climate data you can still download future climate data so these are averages that have been uh, that have been uh, calibrated so you can read through this information and understand more about this data click download to whatever you want to download and then run it and let it run your analysis and then get your results so uh, that is it for today's exercise if you found this video useful and you want to learn more on gis subscribe to my channel don't forget to give this video a thumbs up otherwise i'm just happy you're here see you in my next video